Have you been trying to break into tech? Have you been talking to IT guys about advice? Now, before you implement what they're telling you, I definitely recommend that you watch this video because I'm gonna break down the worst advice and the lessons learned from my tech career so you can avoid that. So if you wanna save yourself years of heartache and suffering, watch this video. Are you ready for this? Let's go. Hey, cyber heroes, and welcome back to my channel. If you're new, I'm Boyd Clewis, an internationally recognized cybersecurity expert, and I help people upgrade their jobs into a six-figure tech career. And if you wanna join me on this journey, be sure to like this video, subscribe, hit the bell so that you're notified whenever I drop new content guaranteed to help you take your career to six figures and beyond. All right, guys, before we get started, let me leave you, uh, 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 let me leave you with a disclaimer. I only speak about my experience and what I've been through because anything else would be a fabrication and teaching theory. And I don't do that. So I'm going to give it to you real. With that being said, story time. OK, guys, so back when I was in the early stages of my career, I was seeking out advice from people that have been there to be able to take my tech career to the next level, because it only makes sense. Right. If I am where I am right now, trying to get started in tech, it only makes sense that I would reach out to a professional that's working in the field to get some insight. That's exactly what I did. That's probably what you're doing right now. Nod your head, right? And it didn't work out so well. So let me give you the first, first, number one, worst advice ever. Get a college degree. Absolutely horrible advice, and I'm gonna explain why. Number one, I didn't decide to go into the tech field until after I had already failed out of college. So if you were gonna tell me that I needed to get a college degree in order to get into tech, that wasn't gonna work for me at all. And it's not that I'm incapable of passing classes or anything like that. I mean, <laughs> I think I'm a pretty smart guy. But I just don't like the whole class atmosphere and having to submit papers and all that. Anyway, that's just not my bag. It may be yours, but it's not mine. So that was the number one thing that was the worst advice because I thought about what I wanted to accomplish and there was already a limitation that was put in front of me. It's like, hey boy, go get a bachelor's degree in information technology. And I'm like, bro, I can't even get a bachelor's degree in history, all right? So no. <laughs> a college degree, absolutely not. It's not even required. And we're going to talk more about that later. But number one, so if you're taking notes, write this down. Write down college degree in big letters on your paper and then scratch a line through it because you do not need a college degree to break into tech. Okay, guys, now this number two, there's going to be some controversy about this one. So I'm here for it all. Let me see it in the comments. Number two. So this is what happened. Let me let me explain. So I was working at the copier company, right? And if you followed me for a while, you know, I got that video right there about how I went from a $33,000 a year help desk guy to making over $200,000 a year. So this is before all that. I couldn't even imagine making 200K. At this point, I'm making like $13 per hour doing some accounts receivable. And I'm working for a copier company, a technology company, and I want to make this transition into tech. I started doing virus removals. I started doing some computer repairs at the company because I was passionate about it. It was really cool. The company that I was working at required their technicians to have certain IT certifications, et cetera. They required them to be certified technicians. And so I had a really good relationship with one of the sales guys and the repair guys. And I was like, hey man, I see that you're working in technology. Like, how do I get there? His name was Rich. I was like, hey man, Rich, how do I get to where you get, man? This $13 per hour is not getting it. He was like, this is what you need to do, man. You need to get you a Microsoft certification. And I'm like, bro, I just learned how to remove viruses from computers. I just learned what an Ethernet cable is. And now you're telling me to go get a Microsoft certification. So first of all, I have somebody telling me to get a college degree. Now I have somebody telling me to get a certification. And I'm like, this tech thing is not looking too good at all. It's not. And so. I actually followed through on this advice though. You know, I ended up getting laid off from the company because they moved operations from Dallas, Texas to California. I live in Dallas, Texas. So while I was laid off, I ended up taking the time to do some training on my own to get a certification. At that time, I didn't get the Microsoft certification. I ended up getting the CompTIA A plus. 
So here's what I want you guys to understand. The second thing is, if you're not gathering what I'm coming from, it's boring to get this certification, right? But getting a certification doesn't help you achieve the outcome. The outcome is to get a job. A certification is a conversation starter, meaning maybe you can have a conversation with somebody that's hiring and now they want to inquire more about your skill set and your ability. But being certified is not an automatic ticket. Trust me. So I get the uh, CompTIA certification. I go and interview with the company. So I'm leveraging the experience that I have from doing tech support at the copier company. I interview with the guys. I'm like, yo, I got this shiny A plus certification. Hire me. They're like, hmm, no, no. It's like, hey, you're green, which means I'm new. They're like, you don't have the experience that we're looking for, but we love your attitude and your eagerness to learn. So we're going to hire you and we're going to train you. We're going to teach you everything that you need to know. So here's what you got to understand. I had the A plus certification, which is a help desk repair, break, fix type of thing, meaning if something is broken, you fix it. But they hired me as a network technician. So I wasn't even doing the break, fix stuff. So the things that they hired me for, I was not certified. They taught me network firewalls. They taught me active directory. They taught me mail content filtering. And at a price, I had to run cable. I literally had to get in the attics and ceilings and run cable but it was worth it. And that eight month period that I was at this company, it was like working somewhere else for five years. This was a small company that had about 40 clients and I had to support each and every one of them. So what I'm telling you is when you can get to a place where you can get the experience and you can leverage your eagerness and your willingness to learn and maybe take a lower level role, then you can break into tech without a certification. But that's not the only way. Add on to number two, get a certification. Do you not realize there's over 75 different IT certifications that you can choose from and everybody has their own opinion about which one is the right one? And for some reason, they try to push this agenda that if I get this certification or I get this degree, then I'm going to get a job. But they completely miss what's so important after that. You know what that is? I gotta get an interview. If I don't get an interview, it doesn't matter what certifications, what credentials I had, I'm never going to get hired. So what people should be telling you is, I'm gonna help you get an interview, not a certification or a college degree, because those things are worthless piece of paper that you spent your money on until it helps you get the interview, then you land the job. Number three, and y'all, y'all, if you haven't been paying attention to anything that I'm saying, listen here. And I said y'all, cause I'm from Texas, that's you all. Number three is so important. The biggest piece of advice, the worst thing that I see people telling someone that wants to break into tech is you need to start on the help desk. Woo. You need to start on the help desk. Oh my God. So right now, if you're watching this video and that was you and you started on the help desk, let me know in the comments that you feel my pain because I was there. Help desk is a black hole. I know entirely too many people that were on the help desk for 10 or 15 years because what they advertise this as is you work on the help desk, you pay your dues, you get some experience, and then you move on to system administration. And then from system administration, you go into network administration. And then from network administration, you go into security. But that is not the only way. And I'm proof of it. So going directly to the help desk, I don't recommend it because it begets this mindset of low pay break fix work because your pay is a direct correlation to the value that you bring and companies can easily outsource tech support thing which is why tech support professionals do not make a lot of money if you want to make a lot of money in tech you need to ask yourself this question am i offsetting the risk of this company losing money or am i generating money if you're doing neither one of those i would imagine that your pay grade is probably sub 60k per year let me know in the comments if I'm right. So here's what you need to understand. There is a better way. There is a way to break into tech without needing a college degree, a certification, or paying your dues on the help desk. And this is the thing that I talk about and I'm so passionate about because I really want people to just realize that cybersecurity assurance, right? GRC, governance, risk, and compliance is the non technical niche in IT, cybersecurity. You can literally become a cybersecurity auditor 
which means you don't need technical background at all. You need to be analytical and be able to follow a process. If you can read documentation on how systems are configured and you can compare them to a system configuration standard, then you can break into tech without needing any of those things. The reason why, because what you're doing right now is you are specializing. If you attempt to break into tech the same way everybody else is, you're actually stacking the competition against yourself because what the market and what people are, are telling you is you need to get the CompTIA A+, plus, Network+, plus, Security+, plus, and then get on the help desk and get a job. That's the advice that's given to millions of people. So the question is, do you want to compete with millions or do you want to separate yourself by becoming a specialist and have less competition and less of those requirements. Those certifications and college degrees only exist as a gating mechanism because there's so many people that are applying for these low level entry level jobs. But if you switch it to a specialty that nobody is talking about, I'm giving you the, the sauce right now. GRC, Governance, Risk and Compliance. Look into security frameworks such as NIST, NIST, PCI DSS, Payment Card Industry Data Security Standards, SOX, SOX, Sarbanes-Oxley. These security frameworks, companies have to abide by every single year. And if they don't, they risk being fined as well as being penalized and missing out on the opportunity to make millions of dollars by um, being able to work with other contractors and vendors, et cetera. And so when you put yourself in this position, now you're fulfilling those two things that I talked about earlier. I'm either making the company a ton of money or I'm offsetting the risk of losing. When you transition into GRC, you become a valuable player of the company because you're helping them offset the risk of losing millions of dollars, which means they have to pay you handsomely. You can start in an entry level PCI DSS position making 80,000 a year plus. And once you step up into a mid and senior range position, 150,000 plus. No college degree, no certification required. You just need to understand the framework. Have you received these three pieces of advice? Let me know down in the comments. I wanna know, have you been taking action on it? What are your results? Let me know. As a matter of fact, let everybody know down in the comments. Let's start the conversation. If you want to stand out and become a specialist, specifically in the GRC arena where you can make six figures and beyond, upgrade your job, I invite you to apply to the Baxter Clues Training Academy. You can go to the link in the description or go over to www.boydclues.com forward slash GRC. Apply, check out our case study, and schedule an appointment with our enrollment advisor. If this seems like a good fit for you and I, we will invite you to join the academy where we've transferred the lives of more than 500 people around the globe, helping them upgrade their jobs into a six-figure tech career. All right, guys, that's it for this video, and I will see you on the next one.